Hi, everybody. Switch over to this. This could be a very boring stream. This could be a stream that no one ever wants to watch, and that's kind of okay. This is definitely a stream that's just for me. Um, I created an RPG. Well, kind of. So, there it was. No, it all started on my friend's birthday party. I had a couple of hard apple ciders, and I was discussing with another friend, the GM of my current D&D group, um, how we would do a supers game, a supers RPG, different than what's currently out there. And one thing I suggested was using the Crystal Channeling from Crystal Heart, which was created by up to four players. And, and then it started spiraling out of getting a different idea and kind of building off of that. And then I decided to set the setting in the Age of Sail. And then it started kind of spreading out from there. So, yeah. Welcome to what is episode one of my design diary for my RPG. Um, I've spent, my birthday was on the 7th, I've spent about the intervening 19 days, 9 days, yeah, the, the 9 days since then, um, kind of brainstorming things with my brother and my GM. My brother's a linguist. That's where we get these lovely list of names here um, for places. And oh, my brother's a lawyer, but he moonlights a linguist. So yeah, what we're going to be doing today is just basically kind of getting random information down. It's going to be a jumbled mess. Um, but if you are not familiar with Savage Worlds, or how to how the system itself runs. You can do exclamation point savage in the chat, and it will pull up a quick, easy to learn, like two comics from up to four players. Same people make Crystal Heart. Same people kind of like I'm building off of this all on. Um, that's Avivor and uh, Iran. Oh, I can never remember his last name because I'm a terrible, terrible fucking person. Iran Averam. Um, who are amazing writers and artists and people. Um, so we're just going to get started. Um, if you have questions or want to call me out on something or suggest something in the chat, I've absolutely. I've got things mostly set, but I'm always looking for new ideas. It's always better to help, you know, blend things together. So, how am I sending all it? I need that. I need that one. So, this is a double pun. Because you see, uh,. It's Age of Sail, so there's a lot of, like, you know, big sailing ships and things like that. We call it all hands on deck because of that, but also because you use magical cards to give you powers. So you have a deck of cards. So I'm just going to start typing. I'm going to be in and out engaging with the chat. If you have questions, if you want to say hi, just pop in. You know, just start, ta start talking. I'm going to do my best to keep talking to you guys as I type and kind of figure stuff out. But if I start zoning out, just, you know, poke me with a stick.
can't type today. Let's go back to that. Oh, hi there, Gothic Mommy. How you doing? How are things? Give a quick shout out. If you're not following the Gothic Mommy and you're watching this, you're doing it wrong. She just got affiliate and is doing amazing things. Can't hear your children, but Blurk and Pop. Dryish people, because I think we should use that now. Dryish people close to home. Here, there, be monster. Yes, all change. This changed when the Fire Nation attacked. No. Um, years ago on the night of the summer the skies turned when we go into night the skies turn black so day of the summer So yeah, that's, that's basically, I wanted to, well, let me, let me get this out and I'll, I'll talk a little bit about it, just in the general sense. Hey, Poke Nerd, welcome on in. First. 
Thanks as he hears. Yep, absolutely. Hey, G Barbs, welcome on in. I don't know how boring this is going to be to to watch, but it's it's something I've been meaning to work on. Um, and I'll I'll, I'll redo the, the blurbs with the other people in the chat. Um, on the day before my birthday. So I'm well on the fifth technically. So it's been about eleven days since I come up with the idea. I was talking with my friends at my friend's birthday party, had a couple of drinks, and started to build out a world for an RPG setting. And so what I'm doing today is I'm getting all of this and I am putting it all down on a piece of paper, well digitally so, and kind of getting all this out and kind of codifying it and starting to like, to make it work. Um, it should be fun. Uh, so what I'm doing right now is basically just talking about the brief history of, of the world. Because um, the way the setting works is humanity, for as long as we've known history, grew up on this supercontinent called Dryah. And whenever they tried to leave, um, they would get attacked by a monster called the Leviathan. Um, 15 years ago, basically the monster gets killed. Bits and pieces of it start washing up. No one knows how it got killed. It's too strong for them to ever kill. Hey, Clocky, how you doing? Ooh, sounds interesting. Get on the grind. Don't come for my degree, though, it did. <laughs> um, I'm doing okay. How about yourself, G Barbs? Um, so the monster is killed, and they eventually find this shattered island chain, which at first looks like a giant island chain full of thousands of islands. It turns out to be a single continent that was shattered somehow. Um, uh, and uh, they discover these magical cards. They reverse engineer them so they have basically their own crappy versions of the cards and these great mystical versions of the cards there. And the whole thing, it's, it's a pun, both hands, because it's called All Hands on Deck. So there's like sailing and pirates and that kind of stuff, but also, you know, building your own deck of cards within your soul to give you powers and, um, you know, do fun things like that. Uh, with it. Cards. Magic always existed. Rituals that took weeks if not months to plan. Um, embedded circles that used rare components to perform a single act. Magic is slow. How's your knee, by the way, or was your leg? It was my knee. My knee's basically... So, fun, fun story time. Um, it's about 14 years ago now, I want to say. Thereabouts. I The day before Christmas Eve, I was getting off of the bus uh, from my job. I hit a patch of ice, and my knee went sideways. I'm a big guy. I tried to get up again, and my knee would not support my weight. I spent a couple weeks unable to walk during the holiday season that year, um, and my knee's never been the same way since. Um, so, 
routinely it'll get sore or achy or if I pull it just right it'll it'll reflare up the injury I have a cane I use when I walk outside nowadays just to kind of keep things going um, but my knees good for now um, been basically careful part of one benefit of being unemployed is that I'm working from home now uh, well not working from home kind of working from home hi doing this from home um, and I'm kind of figuring all that kind of stuff out and I don't have to go out into the world that much and it's when I'm in the controlled aspect of my house it's very easy to to not hurt myself so to speak as I hope you get more in control of it and make a proper income. Absolutely. Um, that's This is basically kind of what I'm doing right now. Um, the streaming thing, if I can make streaming work, absolutely. Um, I'm going to start streaming more. But also, if I can write an RPG setting and that starts selling and that starts making money, then that'd be, that, is, that is the pie-in-the-sky goal. Is I uh, set up a Kickstarter for all hands on deck eventually. And, you know, start making that passive income and the fact that people are buying that book. Um, but again, uh, that's all, that's a bit down the line at the moment, but I'm trying. But how are you doing? Uh, anything fun happening for you in your world? I know you're a teacher, getting ready to go back to school and get things propped up. Have you started, you know, kids started coming back in? Fair warning, we've got an ad break in about five minutes.
present dictionary because that's an important word. Hey, Jay, how's it going? Uh, everyone's deck. Um, but yes, so... <laughs> go over the spiel again. Just because it's what I'm going to be constantly doing, but that's okay. Um, on my friend's birthday party, so the day before my birthday? No, two days before my birthday, the fifth. Um, I got a little drunk and started homebrewing, essentially, an RPG setting. Um, and that's what we're working on today. And that's what we're working on for a little bit. Probably off stream. Depends on if people actually want want to keep on um, enjoying this. Um, so the whole premise is it's the Age of Sail. So think like Pirates of the Caribbean style, Master and Commander, you know, those kind of things. Um, everyone, humanity, to, up to this point, up until 15 years ago, has been trapped on a supercontinent. And... When they went too far out, a giant tentacled beast, sea beast, known as the Leviathan, sorry, that monster came up a little bit, you're on the boat, um, uh, basically would destroy any ship that went out too far. So for whatever reason, humanity has basically been trapped on this one supercontinent. Fifteen years ago, we had an apocalyptic event. Skies turning black, seas boiling, land shaking, bad things. Um, in the weeks after that, chunks of this dead monster start washing up on shore. And then they start cats and dogs living together. Yeah, exactly. I'm sorry for everyone in the ad. Um, this is all repeated information. Uh, but when the ad's over, I will uh, let you know. Um, uh, they um, probe, head out from the, from the supercontinent. Find out that the Leviathan is truly dead. Um, and then they start exploring. Over the course of five years, they find a massive island chain. Think like thousands of islands in one archipelago. Um, and checking like how the islands themselves line up and everything like that, they find they find out it was actually a single continent that for some reason has been shattered into thousands of islands. Um, when they start exploring these islands, they find ruins on there of an ancient civilization. Um, and they find cards. Uh, basically picture like a magical tarot deck. But you take the card, um, you put it into your soul, and it gives you instant access to magic. Now, magic exists. Magic's always exists, but it's always been like slow ritual magic. Like... I, you know, can spend a month planning this ritual to, in order to make it come off. It just takes time, money, and knowledge to get it to happen. So, yes. Like, I'm not sure if you have to physically, like, put it into your chest or just touch the card and will it into your soul. But the card disappears, and then you have it within you. And you can feel that power within you. Um, so now, essentially... Magic goes from being these slow, drawn-out rituals to being, like, if you can find the right card, you are um, you have instant power. Like, picture it going from, like, you know, um, essentially superpowers. Like, you go from having, like, science be this slow thing of, like, um, so that's, that's the important part. Uh, I'm going to get into that in the document soon. But, um, no, cards, cards last as long as you hold them. So you always have that card, that card in you just grant you that power as long as you have it within your soul. Now you can remove it and trade it for another card. Um, and as you grow in power and kind of like a weird leveling system, um, you can, uh, hold more cards. That's where I'm going right now. We're firestorming a bit. Um, the, the higher you rank up in the, in the system... In the, in the setting, uh, the more cards you can hold, up to a total of five. So essentially, you're building this hand out of the different cards you have access to. Um, and cards are split into two different factions, essentially. There is the Major Arcana, which are the cards that are found in these ruins, which are very rare, very exotic, 
They are, you know, a wide variety. In, oops, sorry, hit my mic. Um, uh, a wide yeah, major arcana. Yes. Um, uh, there are a wide variety of things uh, that go back and forth and change and can evolve over time. The more somebody uses it, um, but humanity using the rituals that they have. Um, we're able to kind of reverse engineer them to make what we call minor arcana cards, which are much more static and much more utilitarian. Um, so the way it works is in the Savage World settings, which if you do exclamation point Savage in the chat, which I will do in a second, hold on, um, you will see, you'll get a link to up to four players uh, comic which actually has a really good job of explaining how the setting works and how the rules and everything work. Um, the way magic works is there are different arcane backgrounds that give you different access to powers. And the powers basically have different modifiers on them and things like that. Now, the way minor arcana work is they work by giving you a set number of powers. Um, and that, and always a specific power for that card. Now, minor arcana, minor arcana cards are not plentiful, plentiful, but they're out there. It's the equivalent of, like, say, having a gun or having something like that, where, you know, it's it doesn't have to, you know, not everyone in the world has them, but if you want to get into the world of that, it's not too prohibitive to find your way in. Um... A basic card will give you a single power. There are five, five, because I'm smart, five. Um, yeah, tons of those cards in the US, people are stockpiling them. Yeah. Uh, so also completely different nations, everything like that. And this is all Age of Sail. So like, again, picture Pirates of the Caribbean style. Um, so there are the five basic cards are the Brute, the Diver, the Snake Charmer, the Rope Dancer, and the Rook. And they all give you one power each. The brute makes you stronger, like literally just increases your strength for your character. The diver lets you protect yourself from uh, harmful environments, which means breathing underwater, which means if you're in an area full of poison gas, you can, you know, process that. If you somehow get dumped into lava, you can like quickly turn yourself and be protected from that. It's a good basic just reactive power. The Snake Charmer lets you connect with people. Kyver, yes, no. Um, lets you connect with people and lets you talk to them um, and, like, you know, help help connect with people when, you, when you're having a conversation. Uh, the Rope Dancer lets you Spider-Man walk up walls, essentially. And the Rook lets you see for miles. So the Rook is basically, you know, I went for Crow Rook type of situation and it lets you, you know, just be, like, the perfect lookout. Um, and again, the cards have different varieties as they, as they level up. There are t 10, there are 10 official minor arcana cards I've, I've created so far. And I'll, I'll get to that in a bit. Um, now the major arcana, wait for you to salute, um, are always different, always unique there. I will put new rules to do that. And that's actually kind of the closest thing to where I'm building this all off of. Um, so up to four players has a webcomic and an RPG called Crystal Heart. And the whole premise is like Iron Man style having an arc reactor in your chest where you replace your physical heart with this crystal that's found out in the world. And the whole point of that is that it gives you like access to these powers, but also because you're replacing your heart, it influences your mind and things like that because your heart's changed, literally. And it's such a fantastic system. I completely adore um, Aran and Aviv who created this and work uh, and work on it. Uh, the the web comic is coming to an end, or at least their story for it is coming to an end for uh, Crystal Heart, and I'm super sad about that. Um, but that's kind of where this whole premise is. Um, so all the major Arcana cards are are like that. They're they're completely random and and things like that. But then again, you have the corporation control, like the, the the kind of sanitized version of these minor Arcana which just give you a set of powers. 
And again, there are 10 official ones, but I've also come up with black market cards that will be things that, you know, can show up in the world. Um, and I'm sure, like, there are some families out there that have cards that are, um, that they don't share with other people, especially if they're the ones that are creating the cards. So, like, experimental and black market and things like that, those will start showing up as well. Um, but yeah, like, just, just, and that's, that's where it really comes through. Like, uh, it's... It, it also harkens back to Greedfall, if you guys remember my playthrough of... Uh, not playthrough, I played a couple of sessions of that. But, uh, like, it just... I, I, like, I love the idea of... Um, oh, <laughs> thank you, Tulua. Give me a second. I love the idea of, like, you can go... Uh, one game can be done as a pirate crew, whose job it is to basically just, you know, take down other ships, and that's all they're doing is that. Um to a more traditional game of them exploring the ruins to um thank you very much for the shout out uh, to Lula welcome on in um to doing all that kind of stuff and just like having it so that like you have this just world where everything is your your focus um okay uh Let's do the nations of Dre. So Drya is the is the supercontinent that humans were on beforehand. So this is basically these are the different starting worlds. Worlds, jeez, not worlds, but um, this is and what I'm doing right today. Uh, I remembered my story. I was going to tell you clock, but it's not for chat. That is completely fair. Tell me off of chat. Um, but, yeah, so what I'm doing today, and I'll, I'll keep on doing this if people are interested. In, and, you know, it's, it's one of those things of, you know, if people still want to want to see me do this. Um, what I'm doing today is I'm kind of just getting a lot of the ideas out onto, like, a kind of Bible situation. Um, where this is just a world Bible of, like, here's what's going on in the world and things like that. Um, I intentionally left certain things blank, like... What kill what what the sundering is that kills Leviathan? I'm not touching that. Different DMs can do whatever they want on those. What shatter the shattered lands? No idea. That's something for the DMs. You know, there's going to be theories. Of course, I'll put into the the, the document. But um, the idea is, if I can get this fleshed out enough and created enough, that I might be able to put this together and kickstart this and put this into an actual PDF and kind of get all that working and yeah that'd be f absolutely fantastic if I could but that's gotta be the thing um so let's go through the niches uh Arland Arland will do first actually we're gonna do this cause I've already previously worked a little bit with my brother and my my current DM about this kind of stuff so I am going to copy and paste what I already have. And kind of message them to myself. Can I message them to myself? Is that going to work? No, I cannot message them myself uh, easily enough. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to bombard their shit out of somebody's DMs. Give me a second. That didn't work. At least it did work, but kind of. Um, so how do we undo? Undo. Paste. Paste without formatting. That's a text.
that. I keep on remembering. Come on in. Uh, let me get you a quick shout out. Isn't your birthday tomorrow, Ellie? If I remember correctly. Maybe. Well, happy early birthday. Okay, so there are four different nations in Drya that are in my setting. Um, here's what I have for them. I have at least four. Um, I have for three of them, and I'll work on the fourth one in a second. No one knew that she was a shooter. That's very cool. I will admit, reading this document title, I read All Hands on Dick. Everyone's been reading All Hands on Dick. It's kind of funny. Uh, but it's actually a double pun because it's an RPG I'm creating that both uses cards as a me as a mechanic, so deck of cards, and is set in the Age of Sail, so, you know, all hands on deck for the Age of Sail. Uh, but the three nations we have detailed so far are Arland, which is the land of a thousand gods slash the household god. Uh, very religious, but the religion is tied more to fey and nature spirits. Each town, river, natural feature has its own inhabiting spirit, and the Arlish people are their caretakers and servants. Ruled by Regency, the next ruler is whoever can go beneath the Arl Mountain and be granted the Thistle Crown. This has been the same family for centuries. Uh, it has not gone unnoticed that the same family keeps on doing this. Um, the Arlish people are struggling with their religion in the New World. Um, some wealthy nobles have even shipped a piece of the Arl to their main colony in New Arlton, Arltown, claiming it brings the spirit with it. So basically... Uh, the Arland is what I'm basically going with is a more English, uh, England meets Celtic belief. So very much of the, you know, the spirits of the land are the same thing as like the Fae, where, you know, you have to be respected and feared, but also, you know, you can call on them for aid and things like that. Um, then we have uh, Vatsalia which is innovation in academia. On the surface, the station seems to be more scientifically progressed. In truth, the different noble families have hoarded knowledge like dragons, specializing in one field to the exclusion of others and passing their discoveries only down to the next generation of their line. Uh, ruled by a parliament of scientists, admission to this, to this august body requires peer review and as such is primarily made up of the latest scions of the great houses. Um, so this is more inspired by... Um, I don't have a Hydra Redeem. I actually don't have any water with me, and I will be grabbing some land later. I took a, I drank right before I came downstairs. Um, yes. Um, So yes, uh, Arland is more the English Celtic idea of, of nation war going for. Vasalia is the Indian Asian style. You know, I, I like the idea of dealing with like there is one noble house that is known for producing chemists, and all of chemistry is basically studied through there, and they have all the notes and they share it with nobody. So they'll come through with a chemical breakthrough, but they can't. They won't explain it to anybody. Um, 
Dom Dracona, not Dom, Dom Dracona. Uh, Dom Dracona is a nation that is, I, I think I described it as Gothic, uh, Gothic Vikings. Um, East European nihilism and blood magic, dark clothing, dark outlooks, mix of the Ru Russian joie de vivre of the what's the worst that can happen, that, that's not that bad kind of situation. Um, they're ruled by an amorphous set of consuls who are elected and disbanded as needs arise and fall. So basically, somebody will come together and, um, you know, as something happens where you're like, you're looking, looking like, you know, okay, we need to decide who, where to plant the crops is thing. Okay. Well, Bob is probably the best farmer we have. Let's go give him, let's give him a spot on the council. And then we need to con like, you know, a contrary opinion and things like that. And then have them all form up together, take care of the problem and then disband. Now, none of these are, um, fuck around and find out. Exactly, Allie. Now, like, a lot of these, so, the three main factions in the New World, in the Shattered Lands of my setting, are the nobles slash national, people still clinging to the old world of Drya. The trading companies, which are the ones that are like, you know, very much more of the just corporation money for money's sake kind of situation. And then the Collector's Guild. Now, the Collector's Guild is basically pirates because you have to have good pirates. But they are the first ships that landed on this nation. They are the first ships that found the cards and how to use them. And they also found the artifacts, which are basically devices that are powered by people with cards in their soul. Um, so, like, you might, they might have an engine for their ship that as long as you have a powerful enough card, you can touch it and the engine will run. Um, so, they are the, the complete and utter wild cards, pardon the pun, of just, you know, assholes of, you know, you pay, you pay a license, you pay a licensing fee to the Collector's Guild, your guild dues, in order to get an exploration fee, but they don't give you any help. They're just a racket. Where if you don't pay for um, for protection, then they will hunt you down, take everything you ha have, claim that you don't have the proper papers, and then scuttle your ship. Um, so, like I said, I don't want to go like too too in depth in these nations from the past, which aren't even going to show up anymore, or at least not going to be part of the main thing. Now you can go back and and play in play in those worlds if you want to. It's just not. Um, uh, it's just not, you know, where the main setting is. The main setting is going to be here in the Shattered Lands, um, in the different colonies that are showing up here, and the exploring the ruins and ruins, ruins, whatever, the the, the old decrepit buildings. That's what we're exploring. Um. And the last nation is Assyria. I just created them. The culture is like Spanish and Mediterranean. Um, and so, like e each, uh, that's probably you know we'll probably do the proper spelling instead of whatever the bastard just did. Um, so, and like the, the, again, these are going to be like where your character is from, but depending on which faction you side with, it may not matter at all. Um, but it's just something to kind of give you a feel for, you know, the look, the, the feel, the the experience, the shared experience of the character. Yowie, welcome on in. Uh, I'm home, we're doing an RPG currently. We're doing some stuff. Um, this may be boring as fuck for some people, and I apologize, but this is, this is a lot of fun for me. This is what I'm doing. Um, long time ago, yes, I know, it's been a bit. So, what we're doing right now these because I've had them all typed out. I didn't have them all memorized yet, so I needed to make sure I had a little cheat sheet. Um, what we're doing right now is basically we're, we're taking a lot of the, the random thoughts I've had about this world and kind of putting them into a world bible. Um, 
Hey, 25, nice. I'm still way older than you. <laughs> but happy belated birthday, Yowie. Now, what kind of feeling do I want for a series? You're not catching up. I'm getting older just as you're getting older, bud. <clears throat> okay. We can steal something I made for, um, for something different. Yeah, I like it. Um... So this is an idea I made for a culture for a friend's RPG. And and that Feverman might be mad at me for stealing it back. But I'm stealing it back. It never actually got used. Um Syria. Oh Fox is Yeah, I heard I heard about that. Um but yeah, no worries. Glad that you're here. Him. Yeah, get your bed, buddy. Get some sleep. Thank you for stopping by. Thank you for hanging out. But go, go rest. I'm gonna be here for maybe an hour or so more. Um, I still got stuff to work on, but this kind of is a is is double dipping in the sense that it gives me the time and and kind of lighting the fire in my ass to write when I need to for this RPG. Um, you have fun as well, and uh, lets me get some streaming time in. If people like it, I'll keep on doing it. Verb? No, no, verb, verb is a word.
think we can have. Oh, just with an E instead. I'm an idiot. Sorry, just checking some stuff. Um, but yeah, what's everybody doing out there in the world?
Sorry, I know I've been quiet for a bit. Uh, I just had to get those thoughts out. So yes, um, what I'm doing is... Um, I'm not talking about the three different types of magic that exist in the world. Well, not three different types of magic, because like I said before, there's always an arcane background, and that arcane background is going to be the card channeling um, that I'd be using. Um, but there's the rituals that exist, which are basically just skill-based, because anyone can do them. Rituals in choir, like, you don't have to be, like, special magic in order to perform a ritual. You just gotta know what you're doing, and take your time, and get it done. Um, and as I mentioned as I'm typing, like, most ships have, like, in the foredeck, this elaborate, like, alchemical circle. Like, alchemical in the sense of, like, you know, Full Metal Alchemist. But this, like, basically this magical ritual circle that's put into it that when activated by the ship's navigator kind of projects a 3D map of the surrounding waters. Like an illusion to basically map shows up. So that's how you can use to like navigate and determine like where you are. Um, I'm talking a second about sympathetic bindings because like you can get a lighthouse stone essentially from a colony. And then if you use that in conjunction with the map, it'll always like point back towards it. Um, so rituals are great. They can help like replace some modern technology things, but they are always slow and deliberate. They can't, you know, you can't rush a ritual um, and rituals take time and money to put into place. This slow jazz starts playing. Good, I'm bleeding for no prayers. Got a lot. Yes. 
I am focusing on the stream. Also, no. Also, thank you for commenting the stream so I can do this. Everyone who's within the sound of my voice, make sure you give Shay a follow. So yes, while rituals are slow and deliberate, um, the one big benefit they have are these things called sympathetic keys. Um, so picture like going to Chicago and getting a souvenir from there. And that souvenir being this little like statuette of a, either a famous building or something like that. You can certainly try, Shay. Uh, but then, when you go back home, like, whenever you are summoning up your map or whatever like that, you can, because you have this, because you put this as part of the ritual, you can then have an arrow pointing directly to Chicago every time you summon up the map. So, like, the way it's going to work is on your home base, you know, whatever colony you basically consider your home base, or, like, you might get a couple different ones, you'll accrue sympathetic keys for them because that will allow you to like help navigate directly back home um now you also can use the sympathetic keys bound to a person and in those situations um you can use it for like example uh the ability called mind link which one of the cards the imp has um you can use that to talk to someone over great distances just having a mental conversation with them but it's dangerous. Because if I have a ritual that's, that may, says make your heart explode, that may take me a month to do, but if I have a sympathetic key to you, then I can just target you with it wherever wherever you want to. So normally there's go-betweens. You have one person whose job is to like have sympathetic keys made of them. And then, yeah, if you have a falling out with some people, they might make the guy's heart explode. But yeah, whatever. That's He's a patsy for a reason. Feels like I can delete my delete my messages to the person whose inbox I bombarded randomly. Doesn't need all that wall of text. Sammy just saying the fuck this from Dinosaur Lizard. Fuck this. Awesome. That is fantastic. You are raising your kid right. Shatterlands. They are unique, wild, and exotic. Oh, unique, wild, and mutable. They influence whoever. Oh, 
discernment. Powers. A benefit for having the card active. For that, wielder only after three successful activations. Now, I want to explain what that means. Uh, so, when you power stunt in Savage Worlds, uh, you have a small collection of, of tokens called the Benny. Um, and Bennies basically help you re roll things or get you out of a tough spot. But they'll help you also do some kind of amazing things. One of the things they can do is call a power stunt. Now, the best example I ever have of a power stunt is actually from comics. So, Flash is a speedster. The Flash can vibrate his molecules and go through walls. That is a completely separate power from super speed. But it's a power stunt. Because in the sense of, you know, if this was an RPG, or a RPG session... The speedster player, oh, pardon me, the monster's wearing off already. Uh, the speedster player would give a Benny and said, I want to be able to vibrate, I want to I use a power I don't normally have, which is intangibility. And I, the explanation I have, the trapping of my power, is that I am vibrating my molecules so fast with my super speed, I can phase through walls. Now, the way it works in All Hands on Deck, well, the way it works in Crystal Heart, which is the original system, is that when you um, power stunt three times successfully, for you and only you, that power gets added to your crystal. And that's actually how the core of this whole thing started. Because I was talking to my friend about like what would make a good superhero RPG... Thank you for the lurk, Shay. Um, would make a good superhero RPG. And I pointed out that that whole thing of, like, power stunting and eventually gaining that ability on, uh, to use is very superhero-esque. Uh, sorry. Um, so I wanted to keep that in with the major arcana cards. Because, again, they're wild and more powerful and they're, you know insanely powerful and crazy compared to the minor arcana. Cover from novice to veteran in rank. Nature. Arcana. Cover from veteran. Legendary.
So let me explain what this means to people who aren't familiar with Savage Worlds. So in Savage Worlds, there are five ranks that your character goes through. Um, they're different than levels. Because you have like mini level ups in between called advances. But they're basically the five general categories. And they they kind of help experience and change, change you know, describe your character. Um, you start off as a novice hero, then become a seasoned hero, and then a veteran hero, then a heroic hero, then a legendary hero. Um, and those those five buckets essentially help delineate powers. So like the the powers themselves have a, have a rank that they're at. The cards will have ranks that they're at. Um, there are edges, which are basically you know like feats that give you benefits, and hindrances that also require you to be a certain rank to take them. So, the way it stands right now, and this may change, but the minor arcana cards, the ones that humans are creating, the, those are the ones that are very repeatable and static, those only go from novice to veteran, so the first three ranks. Um, and the major arcana cards out there go from veteran to legendary. So, basically, after a while, you'll get bogged down using just the minor card the human to make. You need to go either searching for one yourself or pay to have one retrieved for you to get a major arcana card. Second, just to okay. So I still gotta work on this. I'm probably gonna go to four PM like normal. I'll we'll call it. Um I I actually am pretty far along with what I already have, um, so I'm gonna I'm gonna finish detailing the cards, and then I'm going to describe the cards that already exist that are known. Um, I'm gonna talk about artifacts as well. Okay, so yeah, I actually have enough to carry me to four o'clock, easy. But so what I want to do is want to basically just get this stuff down. Um, and then I can start showing this off to people and help them help me clean it up. And I still have to talk to uh, Iran and Aviv. Well, Iran mainly, because I believe Iran was the primary drive behind the writing. Uh, because uh, I've got to know, like, again, if, if this pie in the sky, if down the line, this could become something I can kickstart and make money off of, i got to know how to license their crystal channeling ability. Uh, channeling system because that's, that's clearly what the basis of this is I've changed a little bit of but I haven't changed it enough all right it's been a bit I'm gonna put my hair back up I'm taking a break
Dragons. Difference for every rank rarity is above yours. Poisoning. Here comes the fun part. Um, depending on the highest ranked card you have held or soul, you will suffer. Kind of drives me crazy that Henry just put Pokemon CM2 on the Switch. You play the old games or bring your own party over? It just seems like it defeats the purpose of the game in the first place. Yeah, kinda. to have your own Pokemon.
cards. Your interval is determined by the highest you have ever selected. Held. Held. Hey, we had an ad break coming up in about three minutes. Just a fair warning for everyone involved. Alright, so we're going to go over the cards that are already established. So the format's going to be card. Rank. 
trapping. Power. And to those of you who aren't familiar with it, what a trapping is, is a trapping is the description of a power. Like, Two people might have like a, just an arcane bolt where they just fire energy. One's trapping will be a lightning bolt. One's trapping is going to be a you know summoning up like earth to turn into shards of rock. Now, if I get a Tesla suit that helps protect me from lightning, then I will defeat the trapping of the first character. And now the trapping of the second, and vice versa. Something that can block rocks won't block lightning. Far say let you do is let you see for like legitimate miles. And then Snake Charmer. Bonuses to, to smooching with people.
Star Summon. Ally. And Mind Link. Share. Treat some up real quick. Powers are spell. Now, this doesn't mean a lot to people, but... This is basically me just getting down, like, where the different powers are and what we can do for the minor stuff. We'll have to create, you know, rules for creating the major. This is generally what I have so far, and it's about an hour and 44 minutes, and I'm kind of zoning out. I fully admit it. You guys are zoning out, too. So, we're going to flip over to something new. Um, I'm sorry, we're going to raid after somebody. This is the plan. I'll thank everyone for stopping by. Um, let me know in the Discord if this is something you guys want to keep on seeing. If you do, I'll, I'll make an effort to do it again. If not, I completely understand. This is just something kind of need to happen for me. Drinks. Playing to the by daylight. Goodbye. 
ice cream. If you're still there and awake, use that for the raid. If you're not subbed, use this one for the raid if you are subbed. Thank you everyone for stopping by and hanging out. Um, yeah, like I said, talk to me in the Discord if you still want to see more of these. If not, then I'll keep these in just clock time and talk to you guys later. Alright, have a good one and uh, I love you all.